Hello everyone. Hi mom. So what are vertical techniques? In their most basic form, they use one piece of music that's being looped and you're fading in and out instruments to change the intensity. Let's look at a score sheet. Using a vertical technique, we would slice the score sheet like this so that you have a bunch of instruments that are stacked on top of each other. Changes in intensity happen vertically on the score sheet while the horizontal movement remains constant. Remember, it's one piece of music, it's one song that's being looped. If you want to look at it as wave files, it's like you're putting wave files one below the other on different tracks and you are fading in and fading out tracks. There are a few approaches you can take. One approach is using stems, also known as the additive approach. In this example, almost every track that you see contains exactly one instrument, and every track corresponds to an audio file that the middleware will then fade in and fade out. So if you were to simulate that in Cubase, it would kind of look like this, where I'm just manually moving faders up and down. It's pretty much exactly what the middleware would do in the game. So let's switch over to our middleware and let me show you one way you could implement this technique in WISE. I've put all the audio files in one music segment. I have also defined a whole bunch of game states. In this case, I've defined one game state per stem and each game state can be set to active or inactive. For most of these, I've set the default transition time to two seconds, meaning that it will fade in or fade out over a period of two seconds. I've set it to one second for a few of the more rhythmic elements. That's just a matter of trying what works best. All right, let's go back to the music segment and let's select uh, the first track inside the segment. If I go here to states, I can hook up the Anklung state to this particular track and I can tell it if this state is inactive, I want you to play this track at minus 96 decibels, which means it's going to be silent. If the state is active, I want you to play this at 0 dB, which means I want you to play it at regular volume. And I've done this for every track. So if the flute state is set to active, it's going to sound. If it's set to inactive, it's going to be silent. All right, let's have a listen. So we could put this in a game, and the game could tell the middleware, give me some guitar, man, or give me some percussion. But that's not usually the kind of messages that the game is sending. What a game may want to say is the gamer has now started solving a puzzle, or the gamer has found the first clue, or they found a second clue. So what we want to do is we define events. Let's look at a start puzzle event, which doesn't do anything else but, say, activate the Anklung. If we find the first clue, I not only want to activate the flute, but I also want to hear a Tiggy percussion. In the Soundcaster, we can now test these events.
Let's see what that sounds like. Oh, we find the second clue. And now we're getting attacked. How about we gently fade out the music when we finish the puzzle? The second approach we'll talk about is submixing, also referred to as interchange. In this approach, I've recorded a few different versions of the same song, and I've already determined which stems belong in which version. So in exploration, it could be this. But for suspense, I want you to crossfade into a different version that sounds like this. Same with combat. How about extra hard combat? Bang, bad guys, dead. So, in this approach, instead of layering different stems on top of each other, we are always listening to only one version of the song and we'll crossfade to a different version depending on the game state. While we're in Cubase, let's look at a playhead here. Notice how it is moving constantly in one direction. It's important, people. If you're gonna remember one thing, that's the one. Changes in intensity are vertical. So, same thing here in our middleware. We have one music segment with a bunch of tracks in there. What's different is that I have only one game state defined that can have different values. If we now select uh, one track from the music segment, look here, it's actually kind of the same thing. We're just telling it, if this is the value of the game state, I want you to play it at full volume, or I don't want you to play it. So look at suspense. We're only going to hear it if the game state is set to suspense. All right, let's listen. Now listen how it crossfades back to exploration. To me that crossfade between those two states is very noticeable because there's a big difference between what the exploration sounds like and what the combat 2 sounds like. So I'm thinking maybe we could first transition into the suspense music, wait a few seconds and then transition into exploration. This is where events come in handy again. So we have an enemy nearby event that is simply going to trigger the suspense state. Nothing special there. I also have an end combat event. This one also triggers the suspense state, but then it's going to wait four seconds before it triggers the exploration state. So let's bring up the soundcaster again and see what that sounds like. that a little bit better.
So here's a typical example, Tomb Raider Legend, switching between game states for combat and suspense. And a different example from the same game. So are all the examples going to be Lara Croft? No. Of course not. So here's male Lara Croft. So here's an example from Uncharted 2, mixing in some percussion to raise the intensity. Oldest trick in the book. You're gonna hear that in a lot of games.
submit! Of course you can use this for more than switching between combat and suspense. Listen how the music kicks in when we start this race. In the game Guppy, which I worked on, we used a lot of different game states, like when there's a whole bunch of fish nearby. Or if you go swim in circles with those fish. Or watch out for that big predator fish, who's playing guitar. Oh, come on. This is hard. Swimming is hard if you're a fish. Ah, gotcha. Oh, watch out. Okay, it's safe. See, that's the music telling me it's safe. Like I said, vertical technique is much like pulling up and down faders, kind of like a mix board. So I made a mix board, it's on my website, and you have the music of Guppy, and you can pretend to be the middleware, you just mix the music while it's playing. And it's kind of fun, if you always wanted to be like a middleware. Here's a different kind of game. Notice how the music kicks it up a notch when Jody climbs on top of the train.
Assassin's Creed Syndicate. We are on a mission to kill Mr. Ferris. We are very close, and the music knows it. So, see what happens when we back up. Walking around on campus. Let's go sit by a tree or by the fountain and think about life and how insane today has been and how fast everything's happening. In I'm Alive, you have limited stamina. You can only hold on to a ledge for so long. It sounds pretty intense, right? It's just a shame that they use the exact same music throughout the entire game. Makes it feel a little bit more gimmicky. It's a shame, but it's still a cool idea. I don't care what the world says, this is a fun game. Again, percussion, this time as you start making your way towards the concubine. That's the pink lady, the concubine. So, let's go back to the opera house. Here's a combat situation. Let's listen to what that sounds like if we fade in some light percussion. See, that kinda sounds okay. 
but you can definitely hear it's still just fading. There is, however, a trick we can use to improve these transitions when using vertical techniques. And we are going to talk about that next time on Adaptive Music Adventures. See you then. Bye.